Now that that's ready to go, I'll just press Alt G to return that to the top. And this is actually getting in the way quite a lot. It was intended to be, well, it is a double controller. It, it's to control the two eyes together. It's a parent control. It needs its own curve. And I don't really have one convenient at the moment. So I'm going to make one really fast. Give this a try. Yeah, so I can move it around. Perhaps I should nudge it back slightly so it's behind the others. I might do that, but for now that's good enough. Right, so we have our blink controller here. Let's connect things up. As you may have noticed, I've got some blinks happening on the screen. And they are grease pencil blinks that I've drawn. I've drawn this eye closing. Drop the summary here so you can see under my grease pencil object. The eye is open on frame 0 and it just holds its position on frame 1. And then frame 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, I've drawn it closing. I need to make it so that this controller here, when this bone goes all the way down, this timeline will have gone all the way to 6. And then when this bone controller is all the way up, the timeline will have gone all the way back to 1. The first thing I need to do is go to the grease pencil object and add something called a time offset modifier. You'll find that in the modifiers menu under the modify column, time offset. The second thing I need to do is instead of leaving this on regular, which just means as you scroll through, you'll see it move. You need to change the mode of the time offset modifier to fixed frame. And that now means that the blink is controlled by this field named frame. Now we need this field to be driven by this controller. So we'll go back to the armature go into pose mode and click on the controller. We know that it's the Y axis going up and down. So we'll right click on that and we'll simply say, copy this as a new driver. This is a new button blender I've added that makes setting up drivers much, much easier. So I'll give that a click and I'm simply going to paste that onto the time offset modifier. So where frame is, the field that makes the eyes open and shut, I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste the driver. There we go. It's turned purple because it's been controlled now by this arrow. So now when I select this arrow and move it up and down, you'll see that the eyes shut, but they're snapping shut. And this is where I need to edit the driver to make this work properly. I'm going to key this controller at frame one. I'll just nip back to the dope sheet so we can see that. And then I know that the last frame of my blink was frame six. So I'm going to key this driver now going down to the very bottom and I'll key it there. So now my driver opens and shuts by itself. And that just makes it a bit easier for me to see how the driver is doing. It's not anything to do with the actual technical process that we're setting up. Now I'll go back to the fixed frame field. I'll right click and I'll open up the driver's editor. The driver's editor can look a little bit intimidating at first. But once you realize what's going on, it's not that big of a deal. It's just essentially a graph editor that's been repurposed for setting up drivers. And as you'll see, when I drag the timeline back and forth, you can see this driver sliding up and down the line. The problem with the driver is that as the arrow goes down, it's going into negative numbers because that's what we told it to do. We told it to go down to minus 1.2, which you can see it's doing here. However, our blink is actually being triggered up here on frame 6. So when this driver goes down, we need this line to actually go up instead. To do that, we can just take this offset modifier and we can flip it round. And because this is an F curve, we can simply do that with rotate. And just by doing that, you can see now the driver travels upwards instead of down. We can be a bit more accurate though by using the scale. So if I press S and lock it to the Y axis, I can scale it into that position instead in a far more accurate manner. But I'll type in minus one just to make it exactly 180 degrees. Now that's done, we can see that just by clicking on this field here, we can see that when the controller reaches the nose, minus 0.1, it's getting roughly here, 2.1-ish. It's not managing to get far enough. And to fix that, you can simply take the keyframe by clicking on it and pressing G, and you can just drag it up so that it reaches six like that. If you move it slightly left or right, you'll be changing the frame number. And that won't really help this out very much because this is an averaging process. 
but by taking it up to 6 you've made it so that when the arrow is all the way down at the bottom the frame count is on 6 which means our blink will now work. That's a very clumsy way of doing things but if we look over here under the F curve we'll see that we've got three different types of value. We've got the keyframe which currently is on minus 1 as you can see here it's on minus 1 and we've got the value which is currently on 5.995 which is what we've landed on here. Then we've got the value of the left handle which is just talking about this handle here and we've got the value of the right handle which is this one here. Now we don't really care about handles at all they're not relevant so the interpolation can just be turned to linear like that and that just gets rid of that noise. Now all we have is the value of the keyframe which makes this a lot easier. So we know that the keyframe that this curve had to be on when it was all the way down we know that that value was minus 1.2. So if we type that in here minus 1.2 that gets us to the right place and now we know that we need to be on keyframe 6 for the eyes to be shut all the way so we've said it's going to be keyframe minus 1.2 because that was the value that we typed in here when this went all the way down and we know that we have to be on value 6 which is the keyframe number that we drew the last blink on and that is how we get the eye position to be closed when the arrow is all the way down now we have to do the opposite we need to go back to frame 1 when the arrow is all the way at the top so this one's much much easier because we know that the arrow goes all the way up to zero and we know that the keyframe that I drew the eyelids open on was keyframe zero so it's just zero and zero and now when we go through we can see that frame one just holds its position because it's copying zero frame two has it slightly shut frame three frame four frame five frame six however as you can see here all is still not well we've got our eyelid open on frame one which is good but at frame two it's supposed to close but as you can see by looking at the graph this isn't reaching when I scrub the timeline to frame two so I need to adjust this even more just to make it so that that can happen and it's all about the steepness of the curve so I need that curve to be slightly steeper so if I click on this keyframe and press G and then lock it to the x-axis I can move it left and right like this to increase the steepness but as you see when I go over here to the next frame along that's jumping all the way up there past frame 2 so it's going too far the answer is turn off your snapping so that you can get somewhere in the middle that's up here you've got an auto snap that's switched on and just simply say no auto snap that'll now enable you to move this around with precision and you can even hold shift just to make that extra precise so that seems to be about right so when we're on frame one the eye is fully open frame two it closes a little bit frame three frame four frame five and frame six there's a number of ways that you could approach something like this if you need this kind of precision another way of getting around this problem is to add more keyframes to the curve so that you can specifically put them where you need them but it's a good idea just to have your open and close position set first so in this case this one needed to be on point 4 and this one up here needed to be on 6 now if I go here to number 5 I can see that that's where that one needed to be and if I hold control and right click in that spot I can add a keyframe just be careful about where you're clicking because you might miss and accidentally click on this which brings up a right click menu then on frame 4 it needed to be there control and click frame 3 needed to be there control and click frame 2 needed to be there control and click and then frame 1 needed to be there control and click now you can have a closer look at these frames and see exactly what numbers you needed to be on to make this work but more importantly you can move them around and customize them for each one in general this driver editor can literally drive you crazy trying to get it to work so don't be discouraged if you struggle with it because everyone struggles with it I mean as you can see here I've already screwed up two to three 
which you probably saw change when I was going through this process. Again though, now that I've got a hold of this, I can just nudge that up slightly to get the eye to close when I need it to close. And that's it, you're finished now. That's how you drive the time offset modifier using a bone. I'll just demonstrate that in action now. Close, open, close, open. Now there's many ways that this could have been done. I've done it using a time offset modifier. I could have tried to use shape keys as well to animate the blinks going from open to close with the eyes as a mask. It would have been a lot easier and as you can see from one frame to the next it does jump. Whereas had I placed a shape over the top like this, I could have used a shape key just to animate this going all the way over the eye like that. And then this could have been masked using the eye as a guide. That would have given me a much smoother blink and I could have driven the shape key in exactly the same way that I've driven the time offset modifier by right clicking on this curve, copying it as a driver and then pasting it onto the shape key channel. So that is how you set up your armature blinks.